In today's video, I'm going to show you how to repair a power window on your car that goes up and down slowly. The three most common causes of why a power window would go up and down slowly are dried out window channels that lost their pliability, which results in a tighter grip on the window, which makes it harder for the window to go up and down. Usually when the problem occurs, more than one window will be affected. To try and correct the problem, you can apply a non-melting silicone paste lubricant to the window channels to see if the problem's corrected. If the power window still does not go up and down as fast as the other windows in the vehicle, then you more than likely have a problem with the window regulator assembly or the power window motor. Just like a worn starter for your engine, it will have less torque under load and draw more current than normal. The window regulator also has many friction points that can wear down over time, making it more difficult for the power window motor to raise and lower the window. Now a simple test that you can do after trying the lubricant would be to locate and remove the fuse for the power windows. You can take a digital multimeter set to DC amps, a 10 amp or 20 amp setting, and you're going to take the test probes and connect it across the fuse contacts. Or you can use testing wires like you see right here that I made. One end has female blades and the other end has alligator clips. The next thing you're going to do is raise and lower the faulty window. And you're also going to raise and lower another window in the vehicle that works perfectly fine so you can compare the maximum current for the window that's working properly to the one that's working slowly. If you notice that the slower window is drawing much more current than the window that works properly, then that's an indication that you're going to have to open up the door to remove the power window motor and window regulator assembly, which is the case with my vehicle. Okay, let me put this stuff away, put the fuse back in, and let's start taking the door apart. Now every door is different, but you're going to have screws around the edges, behind the pull handle to unlock the door, behind the handle to open the door. And you can see there's one along the bottom here, another one there. And on the inside edge, you have two more. Now in this case, there's a little plastic cap that needs to be popped off to access the Phillips screw and a piece of plastic behind the door latch. And you just pop that off, remove the screws from the door panel. And you can see right here the Phillips with the plastic. And another one just below it. And along the bottom, remove those two screws. And on the inside edge of the door, there's two more Phillips screws. Remove the top and the one at the bottom. Now I'm going to remove the sail. That's the tweeter from my sound system. Now I need to raise the window about six inches. That's going to make it easier to undo the window later and take out the one screw under the door handle. Now if I grab the whole panel and pull it out and upward, the clips will release. Once the panel separates from the vehicle, then I got to disconnect the two harnesses, one going to a light and the other going to the power window switch. Once that's off, you're very carefully going to pull back the moisture barrier. Be very careful because it can tear. If it does tear, make sure it's taped back together when you put everything back. Now I'm going to pull down the top because the screws for the window regulator, there are two right there that I need to be able to access. Okay. Now right there, you can see where the window actually connects to the regulator. There's two bolts. I'm going to loosen them, but I'm not going to take them out at this point. Now while I'm holding the glass, I'm going to remove the two screws and pull the glass up, rotate it just a little bit, and then slide it out of the door. Place the glass off to the side. The next thing you're going to do is remove the bolts and hold the window regulator assembly in place. And right there is the connector going to the power window motor. The next thing you're going to do is remove the three nuts holding the power window motor into the door. Now you can remove the nuts that you loosen for the power window regulator. And very carefully you're going to grab the power window regulator assembly and the motor. Try not to bang the inside of the door. You'll make a dent. Just slide it out of the very bottom. You have to manipulate it just right, but it will fit out of the opening in the door. That's the power window motor. You can see this is cable driven. There's two steel cables, wraps around a spool, 
the motor turns on and off and it spins that spool and it moves the steel cables to get the trolley to go up and down. And if I remove the power window motor, you can see the gear. It's a worm gear. And underneath that plastic cover is grease, but you usually do not have to open it because it's packed very well. Right here is where it would turn. And if I slide this by hand, you can see the plastic gear moving on the inside. And it's much more difficult to slide this up, like closing the window, than it is down. Right here's a close up of that pulley. And this end where they should have had a pulley, over time the cable probably burned into that plastic, resulting in a higher level of friction. Now if you wanted, you could try lubricating the entire power window regulator and reinstalling it. But in my case, I didn't want to waste any time, so I just bought a whole new unit. It was very inexpensive with the motor only around 40 bucks. Now you're going to very carefully slide the new power window regulator and motor into the door. Now let's try it out and look at that. Look at how fast that window goes down and up. And right here is a side-by-side -side comparison and you can see how much faster that window now goes up. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.